Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. I am so honored and grateful that you are tuning in. But I have to ask for your help. I'm going to pull an NPR. If you'd like to help the show, you can donate to the show at emmettmuckles.com forward slash donate. Or just visit emmettmuckles.com. Follow the link in the menu to the donate page where you can make a donation of your choice. Thank you. Welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Emmett Muckles. Please visit iTunes, Stitcher, or EmmettMuckles.com to listen to all the episodes for free. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with Emmett Muckles. Emmett and friends, getting it done. Billionaire lifestyle is not about money, not at all, but we need money. So if you'd like to help support the show, be on the lookout for a little donation tab because this does take resources to bring you all these wonderful guests. But let me get back to the message that is at the beginning of every show. You are a billionaire. You are part of the God body. This is how it works. Mommy and daddy met. Mommy and daddy probably had a few drinks. They probably went out dancing. They ended up in the car. Daddy shared some stuff with her. And when you give a woman something, she will make something of it. What happened? Two became four. Four became eight. Eight became 16. At the 30-day mark, you were over a billion cells and you couldn't even grab a tennis ball. You couldn't even put your feet on the ground. You still had about eight months to go before you ventured into the trillion zone. This is how valuable you are. You are a spiritual being having a physical experience. We have issues with the being part. That's why I'm here to help you navigate that. And today, I have someone who has found his being part. He's understood what he needs to do, and he's getting it done. Justin Harris. What's going on, brother? What's going on, brother? Doing well, doing well. You know, another beautiful day. Happy to be alive and and feeling good. So you are uh, taking life by the reins, coaching, setting goals now this is so and and this is why i had to have this this gentleman on because he is exemplifying the thing that we all struggle with we think of concepts you know we we go yeah you know one day i'm gonna be a pro skateboarder but then we sit on the couch we don't get a skateboard so he set a goal and then he put it into action but here's the thing about it he put into action and he let the world know it's kind of like when you say hey dog I'm going to be in the NBA one day. And you go, yeah, right. And you're like, no, I'm going to write it on a billboard so everyone knows that I'm going to be in the NBA one day. And Justin, you tell me how you came up with this because you said you're going to make a million dollars in a year. You know, I, I, I had to put it out there and exactly what you said. If you say you're going to be in the NBA, you have to get off the couch. You're going to be the pro skateboarder. You got to get off the couch. So this is me getting off the couch and say, how can I take action and how can I do it? And I said, put it out there, let it be known. And then also, too, I looked at it and said that I think if you look at the numbers of what it takes, focus action can get you there, but you got to make sure it's commitment, right? The commitment is putting it out there because you knowing it, your listeners knowing it, there's no backing out, right? <laughs> there's no backing It's out. literally, most people don't tell it to anyone else except for themselves or their phone. They're like, I will do this. And then they just don't. So this is me taking action to force myself to make it happen. All right. I'm going to ask you the same question that I've asked like 300 plus guests. What got you to now? What's your backstory? You know, we don't just plop down as we are fully formed beings. It's a journey. So what's your journey? Yeah. So my journey, uh, I think at the earliest stages is um, from my upbringing between my mom and dad, um, I, I would just see them uh, pushing towards their goals, pushing towards where they wanted to go. My mom was a small business owner, Uh, had her business and and that was inspiring to see her do that as as a black woman and and be able to push herself out there and make it happen. And then my dad was just hardworking um, in a corporate career. And it was just definitely one of those things where I was like, you know, I, I, I want to aspire to be like that, you know? So my foundation was like seeing parents that push themselves and and make it happen. Um, And I think background that really shaped me is my dad died when I was a little bit younger, about 11, 11 and a half. And I think from there, I just saw that 
um, you know, life, life is precious. Life is what you make it and your actions. So um, from that point on, I think for me, it's just been, all right, I want to start something. Let's take action to make it happen. Um, I want to be in a career. Let's commit to it and, and make it happen. Um, I've had my ups and downs uh, from do. working at startups, uh, working at um, jobs where I, I maybe should have pushed myself more or I should have done things and companies that I started that were good and some that were bad. But I think for me, my foundation in life is precious. You got to uh, make something of it, but you got to take your actions to make something of it. You know, you're in in Los Angeles or the greater Los Angeles area. And it's funny because people are actually moving out of Los Angeles and out of big cities. I travel a lot. And lately I've been hearing people in New Mexico, Nevada. And I'm like, where are you from? Oh, I'm from L.A. I'm like, huh? People usually move to L.A. They're like, yeah, no. But I think it's part of the COVID thing and some other things, too. Have you been seeing where the demographics are starting to shift and spread out across the country? I 100% have. And I think you're, you're correct because, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, it, it's starting to be that thing with LA, San Francisco, and the West Coast. There's, there's a lot of U-Haul trucks that are moving around the city. <laughs> and it's, it's starting to get very interesting because these U-Haul trucks are just hitting PCH and they're gone. Um, <laughs> so it is definitely shifting where um, a lot of people are moving. And I mean, since I've been here, and grown up here, like I haven't seen this many for rent or for lease for sale signs in a while. Oh, and um, so that. yeah, so demographics are definitely shifting. Where um, I think there's some movement between COVID, between people reassessing where they want to be, and, and and some priorities there. And what about what is what is one of the most important things you've learned? And you know, you're seeing things change. You're making strides. You're saying I'm going to do this, but. Along the way, you've had to have some lessons in life. What's one of the most important lessons in life that you've picked up along the way? That's a great question. I think one of the most important lessons is you have to stay consistent and persistent. Because I think one of the things that I, I, I learned early on uh, from my own failures is that I would sometimes just stop. I'd be like, okay, this, this is something I'm going to do, something I'm going to achieve, but I still wanted it. Yeah. But I wasn't putting in the work to do it. So once I started to understand that if you got to put one foot in front of another, uh, stay persistent towards your goals and consistency, right? It's better to do it once a week consistently versus once and then you just drop it and you're like, I'm done with it. So yeah. it's really one of those lessons of keeping at it. Um, otherwise, how are you going to get there, right? You know, it's just not going to happen in a day. It's not going to happen in a night. Uh, sometimes we want it, you know, like as you were saying too, you know, like with NBA players, pro skateboarders, like, I mean, these dudes are out there falling, yeah. hurting themselves, training day in, day out. We get to see them on game night or uh, the performance, but there's all the work that goes into it uh, that we miss. And I think that's something that I think I had an illusion of. I was like, shoot, I'm ready game day right now. And <laughs> oops, I wasn't ready game day right now. And I didn't perform or I didn't do things. And I, I realized that it takes work. There's a lot of work behind the scenes that you got to stay with. Uh, to make things happen. You know, I, I'm glad you said that because I see a lot of mediocrity because things are so easily accessible now and anybody can take 15 seconds and look like they know what they're doing. But I've been in the game a while and I know it takes, there's things that I've, I've picked up and I said, I got to put this down. And the reason I put it down is because I've, I think I've hit my end. Then about a year, two, five years later, it comes back in my life. From what I learned then, now I'm like, oh, I, now I see what it is. And someone told me this one time um, about life. Sometimes you can be too close to things to see how it actually works. And you have to step away from it. You come at it with fresh eyes, and it becomes so apparently easy to you. You know, but uh, you're, you're going through a journey yourself in you know, there are some things that people don't worry about, but really should. And I think you've pinpointed some of those things. Oh, can you explain those to us? Yeah. And I think some of the things that people should focus on and, and worry about are like, what are your values? What are those things that are important to you? Because those foundational things will be there, right? But yeah. sometimes we start with, I, I want to do this. Um, and even too with my goal, like, hey, I want to drive towards this big goal. But the main thing is like, I know what my values are at and why this is important to me. But if you don't start with the why it's important and your values and make sure those things connect, a lot of times we just run towards something and then maybe we achieve it and we don't feel fulfilled, right? We're like, oh man, I thought once I hit this goal, I was going to be happy smiling. And the whole way there, you weren't smiling at all, just pushing, pushing, pushing. And 
you miss something along the way. And I think that journey is important, you know, and, yeah. and making sure along that journey, you observe what's going on, you look around you, um, you stay, you stay woke to the journey that you're on. You know, one of the things that I figured out this, um, uh, and I don't think many people understand it. Sometimes you get to a goal and that goal is complete, but you needed that goal to do the next thing. Mm-hmm. Like there are things that I, I have picked up. For instance, I'm into CNC working now. So I have machines and I'm programming stuff. I had one a couple years ago, was so frustrated with it that I sold it. But then I went and bought a bigger one and I just took right to it. Like, oh yeah, I'm like making all this stuff. But it was one of those things you have to go through. You have to learn. You have to figure it out. And then you have to have some level of success. But there's greater success because you have that as part of your component in your arsenal. Now, I got to ask you. So (laughs) you said, when did this come about? You said, I'm going to make a million bucks. I'm going to document the process. I'm going to let everybody see that I'm about my salt. Were you just sitting on the couch Netflixing and chilling, got your partner next to you, got a bottle of rosé or, you know, well, you know, in a lot of states, there's things that are legal now that you did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you was just chilling, yeah. and he was like, and you had one of those epiphany moments like, oh, babe, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> You, you know, uh, <laughs> you're killing me here, so I'm just dying and laughing. But, you know, it, it's one of those things that I think um, with 2020 and all that was going on, yeah. I really was sitting down and I was like, what do I want to work on? Where do I want to go next? And I think a big thing for me is uh, making an impact in my life, but making an impact in other people's lives around me. And when you look at the rate of a lot of communities, uh, the chance of becoming a millionaire, it's very small or the chance of reaching a million. And I was like, you know, what if I can document a process here that showed what you can do? And I'll, I'm will i gonna try and condense that process down really fast and just do it in like a time period that people can hold on to, look at and see that it is possible. Let's just make that happen. Let's see what can, what can happen from that. So I think I, I push myself to say, hey, 2021's coming up. You're gonna, you're gonna put up or shut up, Justin. And this is like in the middle of the year around my birthday time in July. And I think sometimes around our birthdays, we were like, man, what, what should I do? Where am I at? And um, so it did take time about, I had to wait until the end of the year. And I was like, you know, I am going to do this. Um, let's, let's, let's make it happen. And, and let's show the process because with showing the process, then people can see it's real. Cause a lot of times, like we say, you see, you see the person accept the trophy, but you don't see the work getting to that trophy. So I was like, this is, this is a good way to be able to show that. I, you know, that's a, it's, it's lofty, but it's not lofty because I used to, I I remember a time when it was unfathomable to hear about a billionaire, but because of our fiat system and how we've devalued the dollar, a billion is nothing now, you know? So a million is really not hard to attain, but it's the timescape that you put in. I'm like, I'm like, this would be dope, dog. I'm gonna tell you, this this would be super dope if, like, let's say December thirty first. No, December thirtieth, right? You're sitting at home, and you're like, I'm only like ten dollars in. What am I gonna do? And then you turn on the TV, and there's the Powerball, and you hit for five million dollars. It's a wrap, son. I told you I could do it. <laughs> Wu Tang. <laughs> Well, you know, along the way, I'm going to have to buy a few auto tickets for you just to cover it, you know? <laughs> you always got to have insurance, right? You know, just make sure yeah. the Powerball is real big right now. So right. if I get it, technically, I hit the goal, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You just, you know, and this is what I, the reason I said it like that is because I often talk to God and I ask God for things and I picture it in a succinct manner. I picture it manifesting in a succinct manner. And then when it doesn't show up like that, we're a little miffed, but sometimes, but it will show up. It just doesn't have the exact form. Sometimes it doesn't even look like what you pictured, but you are there. And, and that's why I brought up that scenario because sometimes 
things come to you in, in, in different forms and different energies. But I want to ask you, when did you start your coaching um, life? Yeah, so that's something that I actually, um, from my early years of college, I just started like working with people, helping people and doing internships. And then uh, small businesses were uh, saying, hey, I need some help. And I was like, well, I understand how to do this. Uh, I can help you with marketing. Like early days of social media, early days of things. Um, and then next thing I know, I was like, I think I'm pretty good at this. I can figure this out. I started my own projects. I started my own side hustles. Let's do this. And I just would pick clients up along the way. Um, and it's something too, over the past few years, I've just been building more and more um, where it's been more of my profession. Whereas before I was like not confident in myself. I was just like, I think I can do this, but then people are paying me, but yeah. is am I good? And then it's one of those things that sometimes you gain a little bit more confidence uh, and you're like, wait, I can do this. People are paying me. That right. means it must be real. Something's going on here. Right. Um, so definitely one of those things. It was, it was a trial and error that I, it grew on me uh, and learned along the way. <laughs> now, uh, you know, I, I give you great kudos because I know where you live. And I also know what the cost of living is. Like the goal that you're actually saying is like minimum wage out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this 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 will just allow me to eat you know yeah uh, california eating you know so yeah because i <laughs> was a few salads there's a few california salads you know right uh, you know get you a couple chai teas and you're good to go i was talking with a friend of mine who i met at podcast movement in anaheim right he lives out in los angeles i think he's from the midwest originally and uh i was like yeah man how much is an apartment and he was like you don't even want to know I was like, and he told me a number and I was like, you, are you living on the beach? He was like, no, I live in the hood. <laughs> he was like, he was like, like two, three, 4,000 is not unheard of. So, you know, it's relative because if someone is in the, in Tennessee and they're hearing you and they're like, whoa, that is super lofty. But from where you are, you know, that's really not that lofty. I mean, and it's very attainable because there's so many avenues that you have there. What are you doing to bring people into this project um, outside of the website? Do you have Instagram, Facebook? Are you doing journals that allow people into this scope to know what it is that you have available for them to be involved with or to just use your talents? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. And I was going to say, uh, yeah, a little, little expensive. I will say I'm not going to throw numbers out because uh, people will be like, oh, that's ridiculous. But your, your friend is correct and you are correct. <laughs> um, but uh, in terms of like sharing, I, I am uh, starting on Instagram and, and sharing my journey there. Uh, Twitter, I'm just tweeting as I go along. Like, here's what I've been working on. Here's what's going on. Um, and then my blog, I've been starting to blog uh, with weekly updates I'm posting out templates. I'm sharing what I'm doing there. So it's going to be a collaborative effort that, hey, I see this template. I want to download it. Perfect. You can grab it. So as much as possible, I'm trying to share what I'm doing along the way, record myself. And then that way, at the end of this, it can be all put together for people to see, okay, here's where he went wrong. Here's where he went right. And I'm calling myself out too, because early in the process, I, I befuddled things and I was like working on things. And I was like, wait, what am I doing? I'm running in the wrong direction. So I had to check myself and, and get restarted on some things. So I am putting it out there between Twitter, Instagram, and then also too on my blog. Uh, those are the three primary areas I'm updating. So, you know, right after this interview, you have to book another interview for December. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I think, uh, I think this Powerball better hit, uh, you know, I'm looking <laughs> at the ticket, you know? <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to book one for December. Cause I mean, this is where the rubber meets the road. Right. And yeah. I, I know that like, with a lofty goal of the 1 million, it is one of those things that I have done a, a good, better, best thing. And I think it's right there at the top. So even if I hit along the way and I show people how to get there, I still think I'm going to feel motivated, but obviously I'm going to feel like, man, I didn't really get it. But you know, like the thing you're saying, you know, God sent us many different ways of getting to our journey and getting to our destination. I'm enjoying the journey along the way uh, and the learning lessons that I'm going to get from this and hopefully others will get from it uh, that they can take. So so, you know, you, your parents were professionals, your mom had her own business and what made you decide I'm going to take a, a slightly different path? I know a lot of it is generational, you know, Jen 
Z and Gen X. Some Gen Zers are or on the I'm done with corporate bandwagon um, or Gen X's. Gen Z is definitely like, look, I just want to make enough money to buy this van that has a toilet in it and a shower and a bed and go hiking and skiing. I'm of that same mindset. But what puts you in that mode? Was it just your environment, your your peer group, or looking at what your parents went through and say, I, can, I think I can attain some of the similar things without having the same path they took? Yeah, I think um, a combination. I think from seeing my parents too, because it wasn't all sunshine and roses. I mean, there was a lot of, a lot of hecticness with it. And also too, not a lot of the things were in their control too. So for me, just seeing that I was like, you know, I want to put myself on a path where I have more of the freedom because the type of business you start and, or the type of company you work for, the type of job you do is very important uh, to the amount of freedom you have. So I think for me, it was like, I want to put myself on the road to the freedom that I want, um, you know, because I see some people living in the van, traveling all around the world. I'm like, that looks like a nice, nice lifestyle, you know, I'm loving it. So for me, it's like what they have there is freedom. And I think that's what a lot of us are actually chasing. But it's just what is your freedom? And for me, my freedom is the flexibility to uh, work when I want to work, work with who I want to work with um, and being able to control uh, if I want to take a a few weeks off or month off. I don't have to worry or freak out that, oh, man, all my income is gone. It's it's still fine. You know, it's the freedom of uh, comfort for me, my family and uh, helping others around me. Yeah, I'm moving toward to being a posh hippie. I I am good because. I realized something. There, there are certain things that I realize in life. You never own your home, ever. What I mean, I could, I could take, you know, five hundred grand, pay my house off, and and do some stuff to it, and I, I'd be like, I'm free. Nope. Tax man gonna be like, you owe me fifteen hundred bucks just for the winter, and then in the summer I'm gonna be back and ask you for another two thousand. What? So you never own your home. Um, and and that's one of the myths that I, I I discovered. So, and I started gravitating toward the mindset that you have as well that you want freedom versus acquiring things. I call it being the king, being like the king. The king has all the stuff, but you really don't have anything. Uh, how? What is your links, man? Because Justin Harris, Justin F. Harris, Justin Harris is a is a relatively common name, believe it or not. <laughs> Yes, it is. Uh, and I have a funny story for that, too, is uh, I showed up places and people, when they do Google searches, thought I was somebody else. Because when you Google Justin Harris, uh, there's definitely a lot of other people who show up who do not look like me. Uh, yeah, I bet uh, Justin is, is, is a, I picture blonde hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, blonde hair, uh, different build, different yep. <laughs> collection. So uh, definitely, definitely a different look. So it's always interesting with Google searches. Uh, what people will <laughs> miss the wrong justice. Yeah. So for me, where, where, where I'm really doing a lot of my stuff is I am coach uh, And that's where like I, I am at. And then my middle name Fitzgerald. So the F I put Justin F Harris, uh, just to make sure. So it's a little bit of a difference for all those other uh, Justin Harris's out there. Yeah. So you're like me, you've had those things where you've spoken with someone over the phone and then you meet them and they look at you like, wait a minute. Cause my name is Emmett muckles everyone automatically thinks i'm going to be an old white guy <laughs> and then they see me looking like a cop <laughs> they're like well, uh, yeah okay whatever <laughs> but i oh, understand I yeah i've definitely had that with even interviews uh where it's interesting because i think they're probably like wait is that is that the guy <laughs> the guy <laughs> so, <laughs> so i was like yeah, guys, uh, Google search obviously didn't work fully for you because uh, this is me and you guys like me over the phone. So I think you'll like me here. So. Yeah. so can you repeat your links again? Yeah. So everything is that I am Coach Justin for the website is I am Coach Justin dot com. Okay. And then also too for uh, Instagram and then also for Twitter uh, is I am Coach Justin. All right. Now. Let's see you. Um, it comes down to the wire. The governor doesn't call, but you've made six figures. You've made six figures with the three, four, five, six, or seven on them. Are you just as satisfied? Yes, I think so. Because I think it's about 
my learnings along the way. And then also too, I think bigger picture here too is what I want a lot of people to take away from this is sustainability, right? So I'm not trying to build certain businesses that are so flash in the pan. I'm trying to build a business or businesses that allow a sustainable approach. Because guess what? If I build that now, imagine what happens next year. You build on it, right? Yep. It's like being able to accelerate in something and then you just stop. You know, like if you think about it with race cars and racetracks like F1, they're going around those tracks fast, but it's about sustainably getting there so you finish. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do with this is I think if I end up with uh, a number of six, seven, uh, six figures, it's still fine because I'm expecting that more will come because uh, it's about sustainability. And I think it's an important approach in life, uh, that long term approach versus that quick short term approach. Well, awesome. Well, Justin, I, I really want to thank you for being on the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. And we will talk before 2022. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to have to give you that update. So uh, Powerball, come, come get me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is where we conclude the show. Remember, you are a billionaire. You are a billionaire who is a human being. And let me break that down to you because we don't always understand the words that are being presented to us. So I took the liberty of breaking it down. We are human. All right, let's break that down. We are people of the sun because it gives us our hue. I don't care if you're white, pink, green, beige, you have a color because you're not see-through. You're not, you, you have mass, you have reflectability. We are made in the image of man, whether you're woman or male. It's just that. I don't care if you're trans, if you're pan, if whatever you are, You are in the image of man. Now, here's where the issues come, (laughs) is the being part, human being. Usually, we're trying to be somebody else, be somewhere else, be what's not us. And I always say this, how do you win a race? What's one of the foundational rules for winning a race? And it's simply this, stay in your lane. Figure out what your lane is and stay in that. Stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. You can look at them for inspiration, but stay in your lane. And this is the other thing. Love. It starts with yourself. So the next time you go into the shower in the bathroom and you take that shower or bath, you get out, leave your robe and towel on the floor and look at yourself in the mirror. That is your God body. We can't make you. No one else can make you. It's you. Appreciate and love that which reflects back to you in the mirror, but do it in the physical form. The next time you see another entity that is just like you, who's probably dropped their towel or needs to drop their towel, treat them with love, honor, and respect. Till next time, love you all. Deuces!